Hello, welcome to Board with Paints Hero Quest painting tutorial series. Today I'll be showing you how to paint the Mentor miniature from the Hero Quest Mythic tier. As you can see, I've already prepped the miniature and given it a Zenithal Prime, as in many of my previous videos, so let's jump right in. We'll start off here with some Retributor Armor Gold Paint from Citadel. I'm using this to paint in all of the sunken runes that are all over his vestments. We want to make sure we get this down into those recesses and get a really good coverage in there. We'll be doing a dry brush in red over top of this to bring those out in the next step. Next, we'll go with our dry brush and use Mephiston Red from Citadel. When we dry brush, we brush excess paint off on a paper towel until there's almost no paint left on the brush. And then using fast strokes, we'll go over all those gold areas of the miniature. We don't want the red to go down into those recesses. We want the gold that's sunken in there to stay visible. As you can see, this is really messy, which is why we're doing this at the very beginning. And now your miniature should look like he's a bloody mess. Now back to our regular painting style. We'll start with Resurrection Flesh on all of the skin, which there isn't much on this miniature, just the hands and face. For the inner sleeves, I'm using pale gray blue from Vallejo Model Color. For the darker parts of the robes, I'm using Night Blue from Vallejo Game Color. This ended up having a bit more blue in it than the card artwork, so if you're looking for a color that more closely matches, you may want to mix a little bit of black into this to darken it. Next, we'll give his beard a base coat of basalt gray. This is an AK Interactive paint, which is a brand I've been experimenting with recently and have really enjoyed their paints. Now we'll return to the red and touch up all those areas of the vestments that we didn't hit for the dry brush or that we went over with blue. These little things at the bottom of the miniature I thought initially were maybe boots, but I think upon further inspection that they're just the vestments bunching up at the bottom. So I've decided to paint those red as well. Again, we want to make sure we don't cover up the gold that's down in those recesses. Those we don't want to touch for the remainder of this paint session. We also want to paint the shoulder adornments and the collar in red. Here I'm using Mornfang Brown to paint the cover of the book.
Then I'm using warm gray to paint the pages. Next, we'll return to the Retributor armor and paint the medallion on his chest and the chain that's holding it. I'm also using this for the clasp that holds the beard braids together. And finally, we'll also use this to paint the gold adornments that are on the spell book. Next, we'll go with some non-oil and shade that textured area in the front of the cloak. Then I'm going and shading the rest of the cloak with this, except for anything that's red. Before we start our highlighting, I'm dotting in the eyes with some off-white, and then we're moving on to a mixture of night blue and pale blue-gray to highlight the darker blue areas of the cloak. I'm going to be pretty minimal on the highlights here because I want the cloak to remain dark. These highlights are just being applied at the tops of the folds in the fabric and the lower parts where the fabric starts to flare out. I'm keeping this thin and I'm applying it in a couple of layers. That way we get a better transition. We'll mix in a little more pale blue gray and apply a second highlight over those same areas. We'll just try not to cover quite as much this time. Then we'll go back to the pure pale blue gray and apply highlights to the inner cloak that was the lighter colored fabric. For this textured area, I'm almost doing a little bit of a dry brush just to pick out those raised areas of texture. And I'm keeping this focused on the lower part of the robe. Next, we'll highlight the red areas by mixing some Vallejo Game Color Bloody Red in with Mephiston Red. Most of the highlights will go on the flat surfaces that we see at the bottom of the miniature but I'm also sparingly adding some highlights to the edges of the vestments and the upper parts of the cloak.
for the collar, we want to make sure we hit this top edge where most of the light's going to gather. For a second highlight, I'm mixing in a little bit of e.l.f. skin tone just to get sort of a pale orangey color. And I'll use this just for the highest levels of highlight on the red. For the upper parts of the cloak, that mostly means edges. But I'm also picking out some various parts of the vestments to add some interest. Now we'll return to the face, and here I'm using Decay Black to really shape the eyes and also put in a pupil down the center. It's fine to be messy here, we'll clean it up with Flesh Tone later. Since this is a hero miniature, I'm painting the base in Hall Red like I did with all the previous heroes. I'm also using Hall Red to sort of give some indications of some writing inside the book. Here I'm just sort of putting some dots as small as I can in lines across the page of the book. On the other page I tried to draw a pentagram which I had some trouble doing on camera. You can see the results here, I'm trying to draw a circle around it. And then I'm just adding some dots above and lines above to give it some more interest. Next, we'll shade the medallion and the chains using Reichland Flesh Shade. Here I'm returning to the basalt gray and painting in the eyebrows, which are very large on this miniature. Now we'll start to add some volume to the beard and hair by mixing some silver gray in with the basalt gray and going in very small short strokes around the beard. Try to follow the direction the hair is flowing with your paint strokes and you'll give the illusion that there's a lot more hair there than there really is sculpted on the miniature. The key here is to build this up in several layers, continually getting lighter, and those layers will overlap and create some visual confusion that gives the illusion of more complexity in the miniature. I'll speed this up because it's basically the same idea going around with those short strokes. We'll repeat this a few times. Each time we'll lighten it with some more silver gray. Now we're getting close to pure silver gray. Sometimes it can be useful to return to some of the darker tones and overlap that where you've done lighter areas. This just adds to that illusion of complexity.
Here I'm going even lighter by mixing some off-white in with the silver gray. This will cover the least amount of hair since this is our brightest highlight. Oh, and we can't forget to put some highlights on the eyebrows. Here I'm going back with some Retributor armor and reestablishing some of the gold on the medallion and the chain. And then we'll mix in a little bit of polished gold to lighten this up a bit and apply a small highlight to those areas of gold. Here I'm also adding some highlights on the book. Returning to the face, I'm using Resurrection Flesh to clean up all those messy areas that we created around the eyes and eyebrows. This is where we really define the shape of the eyes and decide where the eyebrows start and end. I'm also reestablishing a little bit of skin tone on the exposed lip. Now we'll highlight all the skin by mixing some Flayed One Flesh in with Resurrection Flesh. And we'll start over here on the hands by highlighting the fingers. You can see at some point I also painted the rings gold. I think I did this off camera. The important thing when painting hands is to make sure you pick out the individual fingers and stay out of the recesses between them. If you happen to get some paint in between the fingers, you can usually fix that with a little bit of Reichland Flesh Shade after it dries. For the face, we'll focus our highlights on the cheekbones under the eyes, the nose, and the forehead. There's not much to do here. And then we'll add some more of the Flayed One Flesh and reapply the highlights, but this time we'll cover a slightly less area of the miniature. And as a finishing touch, I'm going back to the Nuln Oil and applying this sparingly in a few places where I want to add a little more depth of shadow or bring out some additional details. I'm mainly focusing this around the beard and the braids or the separation between the hair and the face. I'm also using some of this to let it pull deeply in the recesses under the sleeves of the cloak, just to give that some more darkness. And that concludes our tutorial for Mentor. If you found this tutorial helpful or useful in any way, I'd appreciate it if you leave a like on the video and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. If you're interested in more content from me, you can check me out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. 
Thanks again for watching, and until next time, as always, happy painting.